I guess, into your your martial arts school. So you said you started that out just recently, correct? Yeah, I started in 2000, uh, about 20, like. Oh, during the pandemic year, actually. Yeah. Before, oh, wow, wow, wow. Before, actually, before the, the pandemic um, hit. Oh, wow. But it was during the pandemic that I opened up the school to help more people that want to do martial arts that feel that oh they can't do it especially people have disability that don't have disability uh they think they're too old and, you know. no, most definitely with that too it's it's i just find it i find it awesome one that you have opened up even a physical location because i haven't even taken that step to my thing i'm kind of happy right now kind of being on the online platform and sharing kind of what I'm doing right there, if that's a step maybe down the line, totally. But it, it takes a lot of guts, I think, to already decide on opening up a physical location. To have a place that you can take in students and, and I guess, finally remove that barrier of just the screen and online. And that's, that's the next step, pretty much, for most people that want to pursue teaching to, to the next intimate level, I suppose. Um, and yeah. And I think just because even what you said, like I'm assuming the school's obviously like in your like in your hometown location. Right now, yeah, the the physical uh, school it's in my hometown, mm -hmm. but I do have a remote online course that I teach with other students. What we try to do is we're trying to open up to all all the states. Even if you're out of state, you can still be teach by you know, me, so I want, you know, other school, other schools to be open up to, you know, uh, para athletes. Gotcha. I th and that's, like I said, fantastic. And I think it takes, I guess, not a lot of schools are equipped to be able to accommodate for those needs. Um, and I know I've only, by the time that I was teaching at a physical, physical location, I know we had to teach Mostly children. I don't think many adults, but definitely children that either had mental disabilities or physical disabilities were. Right. But physical disabilities, uh, we didn't have too many of them, and I only think that is because of the fact that we we might have not have been well suited to you know host those those children. And I, I think it's 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 sad. I think it's sad because I wish I could have done something better or I knew how to work with it a little bit better. It's, you know, it's it's not like. You guys are not equipped. It's just uh, figuring, like, it's taking the time to figure out the way that you guys can incorporate, like, with the forms that I do. That's my uh, forte is to adapt to the forms that we have already and adapt them to everybody's needs. It's just that, you know, like, if you have somebody that's already doing it at your school to come out and say, hey, just because you have this doesn't mean you can be like AJ. I, I think I understand what you're saying. But I, I think it's that, like you said, that first person to kind of make the step towards developing at least a method or and allotting the time, I guess, to develop a program that would accommodate those people, you know. And I, I think a lot of a lot of martial arts schools, unless they had previous experience or training before, I think they most of the time, at least from what I've seen, I'm not saying this is every martial arts school out there, obviously, they find it hard. And I think it's just because it's it's new and they don't know really how to go about it. And I, I don't think it's because they don't want to. I think it's just like they don't know how to. And I think that first step is the issue there. I mean, and trying yeah. to, I guess, go through those difficult, difficult stages and with the student and the instructor to finally find harmony and really be able to bring that ability out as much as possible, you know? Well, yeah, if like yeah, you know, like if you have a person like me to, to come out and say, look, let's you know work together and create a uh, program, you know, to keep it at your school, and that's another reason why I uh, opened up my own school to you know offer to other schools how to develop a program and i think that's awesome so please if you guys are martial arts instructors or uh, martial arts teachers that 
do want to help out uh, this community too, please definitely reach out to Justin. Obviously, he has a, a good stake in the, uh, the community there and uh, definitely active in doing his thing and still kicking as well. So please definitely reach out to him about basically figuring out how to better better help those that have disabilities be able to enjoy the benefits of martial arts too. Because like, I believe that martial arts has benefits for all different people, walks of life and, and such. So obviously it's touched you and helped you along your journey and stuff and in a positive manner. I know it has for myself too. So I, I would think it would be able to help out more people, not just the able body, but also those that might have a physical disability or any other, any disability in the long run, right? Yeah, right. Because I mean, like, I know I've been wanting you for you know for years you know you helped me a lot of, of especially keeping up keeping up with the motivation you know because most people get so down because they can't do it and you know it takes another martial artist to tell them hey you can you can do it let's figure a way out to do it well, one, I'm very humbled to hear that, Justin. Thank you. I, I honestly think I, I've been watching you do your thing, and I, I find it amazing, honestly, that you you still are doing your thing. And, dude, I can't even say that I've competed on, like, a national, international level. You know that, right? Like, you have accolades to back up, like, the fact that you're, you're pursuing your martial art to the highest degree that you can. Look, yes, guys, zooming in right now into, into that right there. Like, the medals, like... Just naming off of a few things, where is your list of your list of uh, achievements here? From like 2018, 2019, you went to like the U.S. Opens, you went to the USA Taekwondo Iowa State Championships, you went to the Wisconsin State Championships. Like you're you're a very active competitor, and I think that's a, already says a lot. But most people that said they're martial artists but don't even test their um, test their skill sets or abilities in the highest form that they can. And I think that's awesome that you're doing that, dude. I competed in. What, 2020 uh, for a lot of competitions here for the, the U.S. Open, Nationals. There was a couple of online tournaments that we had during the pandemic, but about a month ago, I have went to California for a competition. Nice. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and how, <laughs> how, did you, how did you do in that tournament? Oh, he has the medal out and everything ready to show. Dang. So this is the first place that I took. Uh, I was the only uh, para-athlete that we had there. The organization that was it, they were so happy to have a para-athlete that wanted to compete. So they took the time and let me compete in my division. I'm very also happy that the organizations that you're competing in are obviously also very open-minded and support, support you and other people like, like you. Right. So yeah, that's, that's the, definitely the one thing. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that at least from the top down, it's not just a bottom up climb. Like there's, you have people from the top also trying to help you get to where you need to be. You know what I mean? It was an amazing experience. You know, they, they get to see a person in a walker, you know, competing the difficult forms that, you know, they are, <laughs> but, you know, to get the, the organization and the referees to cheer you on, that was a, amazing. I mean, I did a high kick. The referees, you know, they were like, oh, hell yeah. That was like a, you know, a highlight of my fun. And a couple of days ago, I got reached out uh, from the organization. I made their California uh, team. Oh, congrats, dude. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome, man. I think that's awesome. Yeah, so, you know, so uh, I'm on three different teams. So I'm on California. Uh, I'm on the pair U.S. Uh, initial team. Uh, plus uh, my closest team. So, you know, it, uh, it's been a great you know, career. That's good, uh, man. That's good. So that being said, it seems sounds like you have a lot of supporters, but I guess who would who would you say are your like closest supporters that really have been helping you go along this whole journey through the ups and downs? Well, I would have to say my, you know, my family, my 
grandparents, my aunt, my mom, my uh, adopted uh, family. They they helped me so much. I got my you know, I got my you know, mom, especially my you know my aunt, my grandmother. They're the ones that helped me get started. But it's the people that like you, AJ, and other most of others, other fans, you know, out there. I never thought I'd be a muscle artist. You know what, Walter Jones from the Money Movement? Walter Jones? Yes. Okay, yeah. Me and him were in the same class when he was 